guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Sai. Hopefully you've watched the previous two videos I've done um, on my Convincing 101 series. And the first one is just an introduction video where I tell you, I give you an overview of what's involved in this topic. And then the first episode discusses what happens after an offer has been accepted or um, has been given. Um, so sales memorandums, instructing solicitors. In this video today, we're going to be discussing drafting contracts. Once a sales memorandum has been issued to both solicitors by the estate agents, the owners, so the responsibility falls on the seller solicitors to issue the contract to the buyer solicitors. This will normally hold up things for a bit. Um, you tend to find that there's about a week or sometimes two weeks, hopefully less than that, um, before contracts are issued, depending on how straightforward the file is. If the property is registered, it will be a little bit quicker than if it's unregistered, for example. But the estate agents and yourself will be wanting to push for this process to happen quickly. So this is both from the seller's and the buyer's perspective. Um, in the draft contract in itself, um, there will be a bit of work for the sellers to do as well as the actual solicitors. So you find that within your initial forms from the solicitors, so this is the seller solicitors, to the seller, they will include, um, of course, their terms and conditions, their final quote, initial forms that you need to complete, but they will also include a seller's property information form and a fittings and contents form or fittings, fittings and fixtures form, whatever you want to call it, really. Um, it's basically a form which talks about the items in the property and which ones you're taking and which ones you're leaving and which ones you want to sell at an additional price. That is what fittings and contents form is. The seller's property information form is a little bit more than that. So it talks about quite a lot of information. It will ask you questions about boundaries, alterations, planning in the area, if there's been any problems or complaints from neighbors, if um, information about Japanese knotweed, if you are aware of the property ha um, having any issues with that, if there's been any flooding in your area, um, it will ask you details about your boiler, your central heating, you'll be asking for paperwork to support that, if you've ever had any like alterations in terms of windows and, and so forth. And anytime you say yes to a question with regards to any type of planning or um, alterations or anything like that, you normally have to then provide the paperwork that goes along with it. So for example, if you've had um, an extension, then you'll need to provide your planning permission and building regulations completion certificate. Um, it's better to preempt to these sort of things really. Um, most of the time they always ask you for the gas safe register for your boiler. Most of the time you would normally have to provide it if it was done properly. If you don't have it, you can obtain a duplicate from the gas safe register. So you can just go on their website or call them and they can provide you one. If you change windows, um, one of the most common certificate that you'll be issued is a fencer certificate. Um, and it's just to say that the windows were replaced in accordance to the building regulation standards, things like that. So you can see why, because it's quite a lengthy document. This is one of the reasons why it takes a little bit longer for the draft contracts to be issued. What most solicitors do is they'll provide the initial paperwork, so the land registry side of the paperwork, so the official copy of um, register, together with the filed plan to the solicitors. That way they can start their next process, which is searches, which I'll be discussing in my next video. And then they'll provide the additional paperwork. So the seller's property information form, the fittings and contents form, any sort of miscellaneous documents afterwards. And so of course, if it's a lease or property, there'll be more items. Um, but as I said, I will be discussing lease or properties um, at the end. So that's going to be my bonus video. Um, so I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a comment below and I'm happy to answer those questions for you. But one thing I'll just point out is as a seller, you technically are holding up things until contracts are issued and it's better to provide everything beforehand because that will limit the amount of inquiries that will then be raised 
afterwards. So after, personally, I would want to provide everything I have and look out for, um, you know, get copies of paperwork that I have potentially lost, like your fence certificates and so forth in advance so that when you're selling, it's just more straightforward. Um, but yeah, do try and get this done as quickly as possible because this will hold up the transaction. Um, but your solicitor, of course, will explain all this to you. As a buyer, I do think it's important to sort of chase this up with the estate agents and your own solicitors just to follow it up to see what's going on, get maybe a weekly update. Do get your searches paid for in advance. So I'll be discussing this in my next video. I hope I made sense. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Thank you very much. Bye.